Hello and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. My name is Adam Downing and I'm the Northern District Extension Forester with Virginia Cooperative Extension. Today we're going to be talking about geese and actually we're going to get to go out with the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources to several sites for some geese banding. And geese are one of these uh, animals that people love and hate at the same time. They can be a nuisance, but they're also one of our treasured uh, native species. And there's a difference between the migratory geese and the resident geese. And so that would be one thing that you can look forward to learning about in addition to seeing the techniques that the Department of Wildlife Resources and partners throughout the state and the country use to keep track of the numbers and, and uh, manage this important resource for us. A lot of geese, so just watch your, just hold your corners. So, I'm Logan Campbell. I'm the maintenance supervisor at Trump Winer. We pretty much fix anything and everything on the property and then take care of the wildlife and try to manage it to the best of our ability. So there's uh, 298 acres of planted grape right now. A total of 1,300 acres of property altogether. The geese are a big problem with the uh, with the grapes. I don't know if you can see it out here. The, the, the pond is fairly close to a lot of the grapes that are that are here. So the first probably 15 or 20 foot all the way around that where the where the grapes are are getting eaten torn up by the by the geese so we have to deter them pretty much we have we have some fake uh, we have some decoy coyotes that we set out that does a pretty good job as long as we move them around a lot someone on the outside and they will take it to someone to band and then they will take it to someone to uh age and sex so what i need is i need two banders and i need a data recorder if y'all might, might uh, get over here, and that way the finger between here, there, and then I grab the two legs. Okay. All right. See one is over there. I know they're controlled. Oh, come on. Trying to get as little gap in there as possible. The more gap there is, the more likely it is to get called on fishing line or something like that. Ninety-nine. Right. Just tell me the number. So there, flip it. Yep. Got it. All right, 1168. Yep. Dash. 6998. I got you over here. Got zero 08 adult female. Zero 08 adult female. Head down. Yeah. So what's that? Gary? So that's a male right there. See that curly <laughs> key that came out? Zero 01 adult male. No. So basically all they're doing is they're just getting the geese um, out of the pen. They're handing it to someone who's banding them. Uh, and then they're bringing us to age and sex them. All of these are adult birds. And so we just look at the band number, look and see whether it has a penis or not. So 39 is an adult female. 39 adult female. Yeah. I'm Ben Lewis, a waterfowl biologist with the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. 42 um, adult male. And so yeah, we're, this is our resident Canada goose banding project where we just go in and we rotate around the state um, hitting doing sites and we try to band about one percent of our our resident population which is about 150,000 uh, geese we do that every year to to look at uh, harvest rates um, if we recover them again we banded here about four years ago so there's a lot of geese that we banded here that are so that gives us, you know, information about how long they survive, any of their travel movements or anything like that. It also gives us an idea how much of our, our goose harvest is, you know, our resident versus our migrant population. What's here in the winter? Hey, oh. right, where'd that band go? Shot over here somewhere. 49 adult female. 49 adult female. Don't hold it up that high. So the resident, this is what we call our resident population geese, which are, we have a hunting season in September, um, but we're to control that population with pretty liberal bag limits. Um, and so this population is here year round. They do make some localized movements. Some of them even go up to, you know, as far as up to Ontario, you know, so they will move, but they don't make a classic migration like we would consider with our migrant population. So our big migrant populations are the Atlantic population. Um, and so these are actually progeny of birds that are released over the years, not, you know, whereas our migrant populations are actual wild stock. Phenologically, they're a little bit bigger, uh, or tend to be a little bit bigger. Um, 
more more uh, able to interact with people so live in areas like this I mean migrant geese will you know come to areas like this but they're more out in more agricultural less developed areas where you know with the resident population that's when you start thinking about your your urban geese and you know when we really have some some big uh, or negative you know human goose interactions mm -hmm. so but we do a lot of stuff to control their to you know kind of maximize hunter opportunity with this resident population but also you know nuisance uh control as well you know so we make sure we're not uh minimizing ag agricultural depredation uh you know nuisance areas where the geese are making a mess or being aggressive towards people um, and stuff like that so we have you know crop depredation permits we have an egg addling program stuff like that that we do to try to like i said keep this population you know under control but also it is provides a lot of hunter opportunity as well so we want to make sure that we still provide that as well got a mean one there Okay. You're good. 48 adult male. Yeah. The resident goose hunting is pretty popular with, with some of our hunters. Mm -hmm. 55. But we also get a lot of complaints about you know agricultural depredation, um, you know urban conflicts. We're we're in a decent place with the resident population. You know we try to make sure that that doesn't that population doesn't get too. Uh, large, but the the migrant population is struggling a little bit right now. They've had a couple you know. bad hatch years in their breeding grounds up north where it hasn't thawed out quick enough. So we actually had just had to reduce the the migrant season. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons that we're doing a lot of resident banding in this area is to kind of give us an idea how much of our Canada female. goose harvest is from this resident population as opposed to the migrant population. Mike Dye is one of the local uh, regional biologists with the Department of Wildlife Resources. So Mike, tell us about what people can do as one of the take-home messages uh, the, to, uh, with geese problems perhaps in their neighborhoods. The one thing you can do if you've got this situation is, uh, you know, um, where you have vegetation coming up right, at, or right next to the edge, you can stop mowing that last little bit. So, uh, you know, geese like to, you know, avoid predators as much as possible. So they don't really like to come out uh, in, you know, in brush or, or high grass. They really like that mowed, manicured system. You know, they don't want to have to go through, you know, briars and stuff like that to, to you know, get out of the water to where they come up to feed. Okay. Uh, they feed on a lot of these grasses, and so that's really, uh, you know, why they're coming up in the first place. Um, so you know, keep your yard or keep your your um, uh, shoreline uh, vegetated. That's one of the first steps that you can take to really start to. Uh, uh, decline or decrease some of your, your issues. Eighty four had your female. Eighty four had your female.